Okay, so today we're going to do the watercolor. You're going to be doing about six or eight of them, ideally. And I'm going to show you a couple of the ones, ways to start doing watercolor. So this isn't a watercolor class, so you don't, you don't want to think that this is like, uh, like a professional way to start watercolor. What we're trying to do is to see what you guys think of the watercolor and the different kinds of papers that you're going to use and the brush and then the product because it's all three things that we're after. And today we're going to be working mostly from our imaginations. At the end you'll do a larger piece of paper and you'll do a watercolor that's a little bit more finished. But not real finished because you're not going to get to draw these pictures. So it can't look like great or anything unless you're, a, you, you're, unless you're already a great watercolor person. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do the watercolor. So, because this is my imagination, I can pick any colors I want and I can just start putting color on it. Oh, sorry my water's so dirty, you guys. I just finished doing that little ink thing. So if I start to just kind of put some color on here, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, and then I pick some other colors because these are just kind of pretty colors, and I start putting those colors on, and then maybe I'll pick up a little bit of that color and put it on. And then I can, as I'm going along, I might say, oh, you know, this might look nice as something in particular. Let's see, what might this be? Oh, it does kind of look pretty, doesn't it? Hmm. So maybe, maybe I'll just make it into a, a pretty vase of some sort. Because it sort of is lending itself to that. Oh, see, that's too thick for watercolor in general. So we're going to lift that up. We want to try to stay light in the beginning because we can come back to it afterwards if we want to. Don't get too dark too soon. That almost looks like a little girl's dress. But I think I'll make it into a vase. Pick up some other color. Throw that in there. Just kind of do that. That looks kind of like a pretty little vase. I'll come back to that in a little while and I'll show you how to add some darks. That's actually a little bit too dark for the first layer. So that was one way. You can put all the colors on kind of randomly and then see what it seems to make for you because it's your imagination. And this time I think I'm going to do an outline first and show you how that would go. So you'd stir it on the side a little bit. I'm very attracted to these bright colors so you have to bear with me. This time I think I'm already going to know that I'm going to do a little teacup and saucer. I don't know how it's going to be, but I got a little bit of an outline going on here. And I'm going to change colors, and I'm going to make my oopsie daisy. That's a very opaque color, so it comes on very strong. And because we said it's going to be light to begin with, let's just put a little bit of this color around like that for now. Just spread it around. So that's our beginning of this one, very light, and we'll just let that set that aside. Okay, everybody, one of the things I thought it might be nice for me to show you is this is just very thin, almost the weight of copy paper, black paper. And this over here in my palette is white acrylic, I'm um, excuse me, white watercolor paint. And I thought it might be nice for you guys to try it. So we're going we're gonna to stir it up a bit and oh, maybe I'll do that teacup again because that was nice and kind of fun and simple. See how it shows up really nicely? And there's our little bottom of our teacup. Hey, I forgot to put a, a handle on that other one. There we go. And then the saucer. Now if I wanted to leave that like that, it'd be okay. But I think it might be better if we just fill it in just a little. And it will lift when we add some other colors when we come back into it. Just do that for now. There. Yeah. That's all. So now the paintings are dry, even the one on the copy paper and this piece of um, cardstock, they're both dry and so isn't the black one. And now I'm going to suggest that you go into them and dress them up. But I forgot to tell you that you want to spray your watercolors first, like you just use a sprayer and spray them to get them nice and soft and juicy before you go to paint. And this size brush is a number 10 scepter gold, oh no, this is an 8 but a 10 would probably be better. But this is the workhorse so, for me. This brush, this scepter gold, is a number eight, I think I just told you. But I wanted to show you that if I bring it over here in front of the white paper, you can see that it's lost its point. But it's my workhorse because I don't really like a point that much. I know a lot of people do, but I don't. And this is enough of a point for someone like me. So the puppy dog was on copy paper, and this happens to be cardstock. And you see how it's kind of bowed a bit? If, as I do more work on this, it's going to bow even more, so then it would be a good idea to give that a little spritz and then dry it with a hairdryer, and that'll flatten it out. So here we have, it doesn't look like much of anything because it's just that first layer of paint. So let's, 
Look at that. Ooh, look at that color. All right, so I'm going to just accentuate our little area here and in here because it's mine. I can do whatever I want. And I think I'll just do that and I'll catch that edge and bring it in. And I think I'll put something a little bit darker underneath there to show a little bit of a shadow shape. Oh, yeah. And then I can put my handle here. Whoops. Just like that because it's just fun. And I'm going to have a little bit of a purple trim on the, the saucer. And while I'm at it, if I want to, I could always fix it up a little bit if I screwed up a little too much. <laughs> I mean, because we aren't, we aren't really trying to draw anything too perfect. We're just kind of getting used to using some watercolor. And I think in here I'll make it a little bit darker, too. It's not going on too badly, being that this is just cardstock. Usually that buckles really bad, and it doesn't hold the watercolor very good. But I think it's going pretty good. What do you guys think? Oh, maybe I'll put a little decoration. I think I'm just going to put a little decoration. Da -da. I love little things like this, little doodly do things. That's sort of like who I am. And I think I'll put some all around here. Just uh, nice and loose and fun. <laughs> I know this is not for everybody, but this is what kind of like what I like. Because it's all about what do I like. Whoopsie daisy. A little too dark. But it shows up probably really good on the camera. Does it show up good in the camera? I bet it does. So, and I guess I could, if I wanted to, think in terms of some light coming. The light could come this way, and then I could cast a little bit of a shadow in here. And then that would be good, because then I'm repeating the dock I have on the other side. And so then that could be the shadow side. And then it could cast a little shadow on the saucer. And then it could spill over and be down on the table. It's like you could use your imagination and make up all kinds of things. The nice thing about doing something like this is that there's nobody telling you what to do. Um, there's no rules. You're not looking at anything. So how would anybody even know if it was wrong? You're just kind of doing what you want to do. And if you do more of what you want to do, you'll find yourself so much happier and full of joy because you're just doing what you like. All right, you guys. That's that one. So this is our white watercolor on the black paper. I'm going to take a little bit of water. I've spritzed this already, and I'm going to bring that over. I call that bringing it down. Then wash the brush a little. Normally, I have two buckets of water so I can keep one clean. And if I take a little bit of that opaque turquoise color and bring it over here, I can add it to my cup. Oh, look at that. See? Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. I can take some more, and I can recover my shape here a little bit. That's very pretty. I don't know if you like it. I love that color. That's very pretty. And I could take... Normally, if you have white on your brush, you don't want to go back into your palette. It's hard not to when you're used to doing it. You want to clean your brush because you don't want the opaque watercolor being in here and, and infecting something that might be transparent. Like, let me, if I take this beautiful opera color over here and I try to put it on here, look at not... Only where it's white is it going to show up. But if I clean my brush... Bring the white over to the side, clean my brush, go get the pretty opera color, come here and stir it up. Oh, I want more than that. That's kind of a little too pale because we're on the second step. I didn't get a whole lot better, did it? I think it's because I don't have my paper towel here. All right, now we'll just, oh, look at that. See, that's better. And then let's say I put it in here. Oops, it's not covering very much. Get some more of that white. Let's do this. Wookie. Here we go. And I'm going to have my light again on that side because that seemed kind of nice. Oh, watch. If I do this, doesn't it almost look like it's the light's coming across the teacup a bit? And then I can have this side be much lighter. And with the turquoise, I can make this side nice and light. And then I can come across like that. And it will look like that side's in shadow over there. I could clean my brush and go something a little bit darker, and my shadow can come down here. It can come across and go down and go over this way. And inside, I can add some dark. I don't know if it looks very dark. In general, when you work with white, it's a little bit tricky because it's very chalky, and most watercolor people don't work with white unless they're doing a gouache painting. Then they'd want a dominance of that. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do a few doodads and I'll be happy. I have some of this darker color over here. And because that's light, I can do some of my little doodads. Well, it's not going to show up too good, I guess. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. 
All right, that looks better. I don't know if you guys think so. Oh, I like that a whole lot more myself. And I'd probably want to do something out here and flick things around and just liven it up because that would be me. And maybe, as long as I have this white and I'm not going to be using it again, what if I put it down here? Make ourselves a little table. And then the front of the table, whoopsie daisy, let me see. Take some of that dark, bring it into that color, and let's make the very front of the table. Oopsie daisy. Once again, it doesn't show up too good. But you can get the idea of what fun you could have with this. What do you think? Especially if you're playing and you're not like being too serious, like, oh, you can't have a good time. You have to be so serious. Now, see how it's bowing? Not to worry because then we'll just turn it over, spritz it, and then we'll be done and it'll be dry. Okay, and now for the second part of the exercise, after you've done six or eight of those, and it's nice to just start to use your imagination because ideally you'd want to develop um, like your imagination, looking at pictures, and the real thing, either outdoor landscapes or real objects, or you know, so sometimes it'd be from photographs, sometimes the real thing, and sometimes your imagination. And if you start to develop your imagination, more and more you can use it. Because what if you have a painting going on and you say to yourself, oh, that doesn't look so good. You'd be able to say, oh, let me see now. What could I put there? And your imagination will take over and you'll make it nice and big or small or fat or thin, whatever I, would work in the painting. And so these are some of the still life pictures that we have. We have lots of them. But these are some of the ones. And if we pick one of them on your final piece of watercolor paper, then you'd be able to do a real a real nice drawing and a painting. So here are a few more that I did. This one is on vellum and it was a very light little watercolor and went back into it with a, uh, I think it was a fine point sharpie. Or well, maybe it was extra fine point sharpie. And I kind of like the way that came out. I have all kinds of nice, I said it was different and I liked it a lot. Can you see it? <laughs> I kind of like the way it came out. And then, this was one of the first ones I did, and it's on um, copy paper again, but the copy paper has a lot of color on it left over from a palette when I was painting. And then I put the ink on it and swirled it around to the ink pen, and I kind of liked that, that way that came out. This one I wanted to share with you. Take a look. Come in close and take a look at that. And I made a note in the back. It says, I really liked using the watercolor on top of the texturizer. It's a watercolor texturizer that comes in a little bottle. And I said that I'd like to try it on some other papers. I, I kind of like the effect it got when I came back in and put more paint on. So it's kind of soft and fuzzy. You'll have, you'll have to try that. And then this one was one of my favorite ones. And I wrote, I took the most time on this one. You can sort of tell I spent a little more time. I like the texture I, texture paper. Now, this isn't texturizer, but just the texture on the paper a whole lot. And I never would have guessed that it was going to be, I wrote down so cool. I think it's kind of cool looking. So that was one of my favorite ones. And then this paper, I really thought this paper was going to be great, but it was like a blotter. The paint just went right in. And so then I went over it with a Sharpie just so things could stand out because you couldn't see anything. It was like so, like, like a big muddled mess. It's a lumpy kind of paper, and it comes in a square, and you can buy it at Michael's. But I don't think anybody liked the paper that much. They all, you know, people have tried it. And then this is my final one. Now you can see, let me get this again, that this photograph was that, and that I, this photograph was my interpretation here. So see, they didn't stick to these things perfectly. I mean, I didn't. I just kind of said, oh, yeah, that's about like that. This particular paper is just cardstock, and all the gray on it is stampings. I, a friend of mine did for me as she was helping me get my papers all ready. I really like the way it looks. It kind of looks like there's light bouncing all over the place and there's shadows everywhere. Now, I think I might even frame it. I like it so much. Well, that's the exercise for this week, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.